Serious question for the Q&A. Did you vlog a date with this video? Okay, I think we need to start with the most important question. Uh, this was not answered in the last video. I promised you to show you a uh, Norwegian Big Mac, but I never did. Kawaboy3, how does the Norwegian Big Mac look like? I know a lot of you were disappointed. I saw probably like a hundred comments about the Norwegian Big Mac. So, I thought we'd start today with uh, showing you how a uh, Norwegian Big Mac looks like. I think it looks like pretty much like any other Big Mac. It's just a little bit more expensive. This Big Mac cost me $7. I also saw a comment asking uh, when I'll do a mukbang. I guess uh, this was two in one. So that was a Norwegian uh, Big Mac. That leads up to the next question I saw about uh, dieting. So from one minute reviews uh, for the Q&A, I'd like to know what your diet looks like. How many meals do you have per day? Do you snack? And uh, do you count calories and things like that? Thanks. I usually eat like uh, not many meals, but really big meals. Um, I don't snack that much, but I know a lot of other climbers do. I'm usually pretty busy, so I don't really have time to snack that much. And sometimes I even skip breakfast. Um, and that's not because I'm fasting or anything, it's just because it's uh, probably my least favorite meal of the day. Um, when my body isn't ready, I don't, I'm not that hungry. I, I actually followed the diet for a while. Uh, I tried it for like half a year and uh, it did not work for me at all. Uh, the diet was like a high protein diet. So I ate um, twice my body weight in kilograms uh, in uh, grams of protein. So for me, that was 140 grams of protein every day and uh, I have never felt weaker. So that did not work for me. And I feel like uh, dieting and stuff is pretty personal. The diet that works for me might not work for you. But uh, dieting definitely used to be more important for me when I was younger, when I was competing. And now I'm 71 kilos and that's a very comfortable weight for me. But <clears throat> when I was uh, competing, I had to be five kilos lighter or that's when I felt my strongest. And that was pretty hard. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I stopped competing because maintaining that weight or staying at that weight was really hard for me. Uh, I was always grumpy. I, it was a, I had a hard time sleeping, uh, focusing on stuff. Like I was, yeah, a wreck. So it's really comfortable now, like, because I don't have to climb as hard as I used to. Uh, I can stay at a little bit higher weight. And, uh, but that's a, I mean, it's a subject that I haven't wanted to talk too much about because there's a lot of problems with uh, eating disorders and climbing. Uh, it helps to be light, but uh, a lot of people take it too far. So I don't want to talk too much about it. I think um, I have a pretty healthy, I like, I don't think too much about what I eat. And I think that's, for me, that's the best way. So I'm sorry, there's no special diet or anything. Um, yeah, just a little bit of everything. I drink alcohol occasionally. I, I'm pretty normal actually. I just train a lot. Okay, next question from Eric Bucker. Hi Magnus, you seem pretty injury proof. Is that good training, warm up, experience or luck? I don't know, I think it's a mix of everything. Uh, <laughs> but definitely not warming up because I'm terrible at warming up. But I think uh, for me it's like kind of listening to my body. Uh, I always, like sometimes I, I can feel my fingers, my tendons being really sore and I quit. Like I never feel pressure to continue a session if I, if I don't feel like it. Um, so I think that's the main point and I'm also, I mean, I think it's probably genetics too. Uh, like my sister has also never really been injured, so it runs in the family. And uh, of course, a lot of luck involved too. But uh, I'm not gonna jinx it. I'm 30 now and uh, like some friends of mine tell me that uh, they had no injuries either until they were like 30 and then they got a lot of injuries at once. So I'm gonna try not to jinx it. All right. Um, from three, is it? Is it three? From three? Do you have any collaborations planned for the rest of the year? I mean, I, we, I've talked to Eric Carlson about doing a collab. Um, hopefully I'll do another collab with Tom and Juji. And uh, I'm doing a, kind of like I did with the, with the white boys, uh, with crack climbing, I'm doing with slab climbing. Uh, I've told you that on slabs we're all the same, but it's not really true. Some people are really good at slabs and uh, 
kind of want to try to master that. Yeah, try something new, try something that I'm not good at. I'm pretty soon gonna go to Italy, uh, to Arco, and try some of the hardest slaps there. Some of the, like, the really old school slaps. So that is something I look forward to. Kind of just keep collaborating with the same people, I guess. Another one from One Minute Reviews. Um, I recently started to climb. What kind of exercise can I do at home or in a regular gym to get better at climbing? So I made a video about that. I'll leave the link here. I also did on like the first video that I ever made myself, edited and shot myself. I uh, showed you a program that I've done since I was 12 years old. I just called it the abs program or something um, in that video. And it's not scientific or anything, but I always felt that when I did that program, I felt like I did a little bit more than everyone else. I used to do it before going to bed and I would always feel really satisfied because I knew that, okay, I did that like half an hour extra. And um, that's been, I mean, it's just something that I've done ever since. It's uh, become like a routine. It's kind of like brushing my teeth. Yeah, I'll leave the link to that one here too, but the video is really, really bad. Uh, it's the first video I ever shot and edited myself. So keep that in mind. All right, next question from Daniel Hyun. What other products do you think you will make for Romney? I've been approached by a lot of uh, merch shops and people who make uh, merch for YouTubers and that's not what I wanted to do with Romney. Uh, we wanted to make high quality products. We didn't want to put out too many products at once. We wanted to focus on making the chalk bag as good as we thought it could be and as cool looking. And then we'll add more products later, but it's gonna take a while, like even just a the, the chalk bag took us many many months to with different prototypes and stuff so it's definitely gonna take a little while but we're gonna restock on the chalk bags really soon though so you should um, check the Instagram for that we'll, we'll keep you posted all right next question from super awesome Vidya will you do a project again maybe some 9a plus or 9b being outside hanging out with regular unknown climbers is always fun to watch uh, I used to compete during the summer and then from November and until April I would go to Spain and only climb outside and just try to project different routes. Uh, so that is my background, I did that for 15 years. Uh, but recently with the YouTube stuff I think people don't understand, like I've, I've said it many times before but I think people still don't really understand how much time and effort it takes to make uh, a video. Also as I've said before I get more views on the indoor climbing stuff and even like the stupid stuff uh yeah the the like the kind of dumb videos get a lot more views than the outdoor ones that are more like i guess real and uh of course i want to put out some real climbing content too but i also enjoy climbing myself without filming it and uh that's probably what i would do if i was projecting a 9a plus or 9b because i could not possibly film everything myself i when I film, I focus on the film and making that as good as it can be. If I was projecting a 9A+, plus, that would need all my attention. I mean, I did 9B and I did 80 plus on site, and honestly, I don't think I could do anything more than that. Uh, I think I reached my peak and then it was, I don't know, I had a hard time finding uh, motivation to keep on climbing at a lower grade. I wanted to do something else and that's why I started this YouTube channel and uh, I know that Probably some people have stopped watching because they feel like it's not enough climbing or it's not genuine enough and I completely understand but um, this is my job now and I have to I have to get views uh, because that's how I make a living. Another question for one minute reviews. Um, did you ever climb with Adam Andra or Alex Honnold? Yes, I've climbed with both of them. Um, Adam I've climbed with in Spain and in Norway and I've competed against him many many times. And uh, Alex, I've only climbed with one trip. It was only like a short 10-day trip to Norway. But it was constantly raining, so we didn't get to do much. Uh, we only did some sport climbing. From Kieran McKenna. What was your favorite subject in school? <laughs> did you like school? Did you go to college? Do you have brothers and sisters? What did your parents do? Okay, so I'll start with my parents. Uh, my mom is a teacher and my uh, dad is a professor in political science at the university in Bergen. I only went to high school. I don't know, I barely finished high school. I had, uh, 
I was almost never at school. Like from when I was 16, I was traveling the world climbing, so I didn't really have time for school. Uh, but I finished um, high school, but I've never been to college. And I have one sister and three brothers. And my favorite subject in school, I think was anything sport related. English was also another subject that I liked. But other than that, I kind of hated everything. I just wanted to climb. It's the only thing that was on my mind, climbing at that time. So, uh, all right, so the next question is from Seth Saunders. Your videos are very well done. How did you learn video production editing skills? Have you thought of creating a training routine for climbers? Or do you already have one? The editing, I just learned by myself. I mean, I've hung around a lot of uh, photographers and videographers uh, throughout the years of being a professional climber so I probably picked up a few things but uh, and also when I, like the, the photographers my favorite photographers actually don't have any education in um, film or photo um, they just taught themselves so I figured that um, if they could do that I could do the same and uh, if you watch my videos, like you'll see that it started, it wasn't very good to start with, but I've spent so many hours doing this stuff and watching YouTube tutorials. And um, I've never really thought about creating a training routine for climbers because I think it's so individual. Uh, what works for me won't necessarily work for you. And I think it could even be dangerous if you try to follow the same program as me. Uh, so I would have to customize it for everyone and that would be very difficult. Yeah, what I try to do with some of these videos is just to share inspiration and teach you stuff that you can put into your training um, and you can make your own training program. I see a lot of fitness, I don't consider myself a fitness YouTuber, but uh, or maybe I am, I don't know. <laughs> but I see a lot of fitness YouTubers um, put out training programs and stuff to make money. Of course, it's, it's probably, but no, I, I, would, I would never do that unless I found a program that I really believed in. Okay, so next question from uh, Astron6. What hair products do you use because it looks so damn good in every video? Uh, I don't think everyone agrees with you, uh, but uh, thank you though. I, um, I can actually show you, that's easier. So this is the one that I'm currently using, but I changed it, like this is, of course, it's not sponsored. It's just a wax. Extra matte clay, super strong hold. And uh, if my hair is a little bit shorter, I apply it in dry hair. And if my hair is a little bit longer, I apply it in wet hair. Uh, because if I apply it in long hair when it's dry, it's just gonna not, I don't know, it's just gonna be really big. But uh, thank you though, I mean, I've seen negative comments too about my hair, so that means a lot. Okay, next question from Charlie Coke. And this is not only one question, this is many questions. Okay, so what was your first business venture? How did you get into it? I don't know, the first business venture was uh, opening the climbing gym that I shoot my videos in now. And the reason I got into it is because I know that I can't be a professional climber forever and I don't have any education, so I need something else to do with my life. That's why I got into it. How did this translate into the current climbing gym? Well, the climbing gym is the first business venture, so. And the reason why it's the first business venture is because uh, I competed uh, up until we opened uh, the climbing gym. And when I competed, I didn't have time to do anything else. How and why did you start the new chalk bag label? What are your intentions with the company? The reason we started it is because we wanted to make a brand. I don't know, I always liked creating stuff and uh, I also, I mean, YouTube is a great platform to sell a product and I don't really have any products to sell. So instead of making like typical uh, YouTuber merch, I decided that I'd, I wanted to try to make a brand. What are your views on less in shape people going shirtless at the climbing gym? I don't think it matters if you're in shape or not. As I said, like, for me, climbing without my shirt is, um, is, it's like a trigger for me. When I take my shirt off, I feel like that's when it's time to really try hard. So uh, when I see people who are big or small or however, like they're shaped, I don't really care. I say free the nipple. Are there other sports you are interested or have been interested in getting into? No, I think I'd say martial arts. Uh, like I always wanted to try skydiving and I did. Uh, that's something that was more like, a, I guess, like a bucket list thing. But it's definitely something I want to keep doing once in a while. 
but also martial arts is uh, definitely high up on my list. So I hope to make more videos, uh, like grappling videos or whatever. I even thought about, I know there's a competition, a grappling competition this fall, but I haven't, like, I haven't trained grappling since the videos that I did. But it would be fun to just sign up for the competition without training so much and see how it goes. Get my ass kicked. Okay, so another question from OAAC Medias. Why did you stop competition? Uh, I stopped competing in 2017 and uh, up until then I'd competed for, for how many years? For 15 years. I just felt like it was time to do something, something new and uh, I did a lot of things or I tried to do a lot of things at once. Uh, I opened the climbing gym uh, or I was part of opening the climbing gym. I moved to a house that I wanted to renovate and I started YouTube and I wanted to, uh, to train for the Olympics all at the same time. But that was just way too much and uh, so I decided to stop competing uh, and focus on the climbing gym and YouTube and honestly it was just because I wasn't so motivated anymore. The last two years I felt like I competed because I felt like it was my job but not because I wanted to compete and that's not how it should be and it's also not how like you can't perform if you think that way. I just didn't have that like thirst that I had in the beginning. When, when I was 16 I, I could die for like a good result in a competition. That's how bad I wanted it. And I would train crazy amounts to achieve that. And that's something that people, I think, forget because people ask me how I train today, but if I train like I do today, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be that good at all because uh, I don't train that much anymore. I remember I, that summer, uh, 2005, I trained, uh, first I would get up at seven and I would do one climbing session alone. And then I would go uh, back home. I would uh, go running for like half an hour. And then I would go back to the climbing gym, climb with a friend for a couple of hours, and then come back home. And I would do some training at home for like an hour. And I would do that three days on, one day off. Probably not healthy. And there was no, definitely no like scientific research or anything behind it. I just trained as much as I could. I thought that was the way. Uh, if I train more than everyone else, I'll be better than everyone else. I never became better than everyone else, but um, I tried at least. So um, when the hunger wasn't there, I decided that it was time to stop competing. All right, so now to the juicy questions. So this one has, at the time of recording this video, 2,156 upvotes. And it's from Aaron Seamer. 1924, now Magnus, where did this handprint come from? That was probably from some spotting, I don't know, but um, yeah, it's definitely my hand. Alright, so now to the highlight probably of this q and I got many questions about this, not only in the comments, but also in DMs and from friends, from, yeah. Question from Tucker Sossman. Magnus, serious question for the Q&A. Did you vlog a date with this video? Yes, I did. All right, so that was it for uh, this uh, Q&A. Uh, I might do another one soon if you like this one. Um, answer more questions. Uh, there were so many questions that I, I couldn't even keep track of which one was more uploaded. and So I just uh, found a few that I liked. Uh, but I definitely might do it again if you like this uh, kind of thing. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you're not already. Uh, leave a comment, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, of my answers and uh, I'll see you in the next video.